Mayor Danielle Smith a couple of weeks ago about the unvaccinated being the most discriminated group of people she's witnessed in her lifetime continues to spark outrage right across the country. It speaks to the larger systemic issue of racism and discrimination that continues to fester in this country. To talk more about this in our Realities of Racism panel, Patrick Massey joins us, a Canadian musician. Dixon is also on the panel, a Canadian musician and non-binary queer black person. Wonderful to have you both uh, to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank nice you. To see you. I want to get both your opinions on how you're feeling about the situation, not necessarily the specific comments, but the notion of something like this being out there. Patrick, let's start with you first. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's gravely offensive for, you know, a political leader to um, compare the suffrage of the First Nations or the BIPOC community or the 2SLGBT, 2Q plus community. Um, it's, it's insulting. And, you know, it, we're already dealing with so many systemic issues and oppression as marginalized people in society. And, you know, I'm in Alberta right now and I'm seriously wondering, can I stay here? Because, mm. um, it's, you know, she, you people, we have to start holding people accountable for what they say, you know, and there, ha there has to be some sort of, I'm all for um, people being able to speak their mind, but when you start limiting people with your words, then I have a problem with that. Dixon. And uh, I think the Premier needs to do better. I think she needs to apologize. Dixon. Quite frankly, I've called her out twice already. She won't apologize. So mm -hmm. I don't know why, but... Mm -hmm. Dixon, what are your thoughts? And I'm going to kind of address it to from from your experience, um, what you hear and what you've seen and, and what that's been like for you. Well, it's, it's very interesting because I come from a lot of different intersectionalities in terms of the fact that I am a queer person. I'm a black person. I'm multiracial. Um, so I have uh, been I have experienced uh, being discriminated against my whole entire life from um, multiple different levels, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether it's from my own black community because of the homophobia that exists within the black um, community and also, you know, being um, racialized as a black person as a whole, you know, before I'm a queer person, I'm a black person because that's the first thing that people see mm -hmm. is my blackness. And I've had to deal with that since a very, very young age. And I've had a lot of struggles and, you know, oppression and barriers and so many things that work against me because of my blackness and then you throw on top of that my queerness mm -hmm. so i've had a lot of experience uh experience being discriminated against um in multiple ways and um it's been it's been hurtful and and i i'm just someone that really wants to share my experience so that people have the knowledge and they have the you know we shed light Mm -hmm. on the realities of what it is to be a marginalized person. The realities of racism. What has that reality yes. been like for you over the course of the pandemic, Dixon? Over the course of the pandemic, it's been really hard. Yeah. You know, it's been, especially during the pandemic, when, when I have, when I was not able to see my tribe, my community, mm -hmm. you know, when I was not able to see my, my family members, my friends, people that make me feel, uh, you know, free and loved. Um, so being isolated was really, really hard. And then, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, all we were able to do was Netflix, watch TV, watch right. movies, listen to music, right? And and we see what happens on media, how, much, how many marginalized people are at the forefront of, you know, media, television mm -hmm. shows, films, right? So it was really hard not being able to see my brothers and sisters, um, whether they're black or whether they're queer. Mm -hmm. um, and it... it you know, I was just left with my own thoughts and my music and I wrote a lot over the pandemic and I reflected on my life and um, the realities and the struggles that I've had to go through even as a child, um, which I speak about in my documentary, like literally when I was a child um, in middle school, I, me and all the other black kids in school, we were all targeted by our yeah. teacher from grade six to grade seven to grade eight. Um, wow. And I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a singer so bad. I was like, oh my God, I want to go to a performing arts high school. I want mm -hmm. to go to Wexford. Um, and the black kid, the black boys in our class were reprimanded on a daily basis. We didn't even do anything wrong and we were just mm -hmm. targeted. And it's still and happening. And I got into Wexford. And yeah. it still happens today. Patrick, I'm going to have you jump in as well. Your experience, <laughs> though, and, and you're going to give it to us from a different perspective as a white mm -hmm. person, but also... Yeah. Um, an advocate, a prominent member uh, of the LGBTQ plus community, and, and you yourself wanting to have that safe space to share 
your life, your experience? Well, yeah, I mean, it probably, I mean, I, when I was eight years old, it sort of started being singled out. I was told I was such a bad reader, I can't be in any group and put in the corner to face the wall. And that was a major blow to, it crushed me as a kid, you know, and, I, and to speak with Dixon's just said, you know, people, the teachers and people in these types of positions have to be careful about what they say. And, um, but of course mine was different being um, a white person, but then being kind of the first openly gay male country artist in Canada, it mm -hmm. really, I didn't really realize what I was doing. And um, I'm still 20, like 25 years later, I'm still struggling to be seen and heard because, you know, when you're the first at something, it's very difficult because you're, you're pointing out the things that are wrong right. and you know like and then I started complaining about the grant systems there was no grants for LGBT artists and so when you start doing that then you get labeled a complainer and so it's um and in country music is I mean if you weren't white and straight you weren't allowed in country music that so was just how it was and it's been difficult but you know <clears throat> some we people have to stand up yeah, because we all deserve push... our inherent human right to be seen and heard for we're all put here for a purpose right who, and, how we are right and you're pushing forward both of you though before i let you go and i don't yeah. want to run out of time here i think we've got to about a minute and a half left here but patrick yeah. as, as you're saying this you being the first person the first uh country music uh, musician to come out and, and, and tell people that you're gay uh, dixon the struggles that you've been through as well both of you trying to break those barriers have you seen significant change or are you looking at just small chips away, Patrick? Well, I, I think that the, the major issue I have is, is that there's, there is concentration camps around the world. There is a genocide going on against gay men in our world. And I, you know, people have to stand up for us right now, you know, and if people don't stand up and fight for us, like there's men in Egypt, men are put on trucks you know, mm -hmm. and they're never seen again. There's concentration camps in Chechnya. So people, straight people, you have to stand up and fight for us right now. Because if you don't, when we're all gone, you'll have to live with the shame and the guilt that you didn't do or say anything. And that's the reality of, of a gay man in society. There's 71 countries that have killed the gays or anti-gay laws still. Mm -hmm. We're one of the most demonized mm -hmm. people in society, gay men. And I think mm -hmm. we kind of helped save civilization with... Um, during the AIDS pandemic, and then yeah. you know yeah. the atrocities of that. Dixon but I will say, I will say that yes, I, I I do believe that we are chipping away slowly but surely. And I think the important thing is that people are ready and willing to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, we have amazing artists like Lil Nas X, Saucy Santana. You know, people are ready to hear our stories and hear what we have to say, and people are paying attention. And that's the important part. And I think that it's gonna take some time. We still have such a far and long way to go, um, but absolutely, we all need to come together and fight for what's right and also support, you know, support each other and support mm -hmm. queer artists like myself and Patrick. Mm -hmm. um, and we will do great things and also raise a new generation of kids that, you know, have high hopes for a better world mm -hmm. to live in and a more inclusive world to live in. And that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for change mm -hmm. and I'm for, mm -hmm. fighting to lead a way and, um, uh, and uh, a bridge and provide lights to those yeah. that are younger than myself um, I, I see you both. Generation. I see you both doing that, and I see you both already yeah. doing great things and being quite the role models. And I really appreciate you giving me yeah. your time I to talk on a difficult issue. Angie, Katie Lang came out long before me, ten years before, so I don't want to yeah. ever take that away. Because if she didn't do that, I wouldn't have the courage to do what I did. So, she's uh, one of my personal heroes. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you both, Patrick Massey, Dixon. Thank it's you. always a pleasure. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good.